So you've been in Texas a little while since this crisis has started. So what have you been seeing on the ground so far and how are residents reacting to the whole situation? Well, you know, I have, uh, well, first of all, my team that I work with, we're based here in, uh, in Dallas. So um, although I'm rarely here, um, I, this is where I live. So I have an apartment here and I have family here as well. So um, to be in your home state and your home base in the midst of a catastrophe is um, pretty surreal in some ways. And, um, and the same thing is true for people who, who call North Texas and the state uh, home. And so uh, when you ask what I've seen, I mean, I've seen people who have been thrust into this historic catastrophe and every new day is um, something new. And uh, we're in the midst of, of the unknown uh, in so many ways. And of course, this started on, on Sunday, uh, almost seven days ago. And we knew the storm was going to be coming. Uh, the meteorologists had put out warnings. And um, I had also seen updates or advisories from the power providers saying, you know, telling people to uh, conserve their energy use because they suspected that uh, Sunday into Monday would be a high demand and they want to protect the grid. Uh, but then as the time goes along, the snow continues to fall, the temperatures plummet. And uh, my goodness, uh, Jaden, I don't, I don't think anybody expected to see uh, what we've seen over the course of this week. Uh, number one, um, Dallas, Texas and the surrounding cities under several inches of snow. I mean, we have never We've seen that, but not to this degree. And then talking about actual air temperatures in the single digits uh, or below um, has really been uh, unheard of for a long time here. So uh, we saw that. And then in the aftermath, uh, of course, the power outages. And uh, it became clear very quickly that things were getting serious. And um, uh, the power has since you know, been restored uh, to most or many of the homes that were out for the whole week. But now we have uh, the other parts of this catastrophe unfolding, uh, people's pipes bursting in their homes, and then the water shortages um, and boil water notices. So uh, it's really like the, the, the hits just keep coming. And, and that's really what I've seen throughout this, this entire week, kind of that crescendo of, of events. For a lot of people in Texas, you know, their main concern, of course, is their family, their health, you know, and ensuring that they can get back on their feet. But how have they been feeling about leadership in Texas, especially after Senator Cruz took a vacation to Cancun and then initially lied about it and said he was only going to be there for a short period of time? So how have they been reacting to things like that, as well as uh, new information that has been uncovered about uh, a few years back that there was concern that something like this could have happened. So what, how have Texans been uh, reacting to all of this information that's being thrown at them? Yeah, there's been a lot of information, right? Um, you know, first and foremost, people have been uh, really frustrated. Uh, I mean, these are people who just simply want to uh, live, uh, parents who want to protect their, their, their kids, uh, people just want to protect their families uh, and their loved ones. And so everybody, almost everyone has the question of, my goodness, how in the world did this happen? And that is the tone. That's the emotion that you, uh, that you get from people when you talk to them. Um, I would not say that most of the people I've talked to, at least at, at the height of this thing, were necessarily pointing the finger um, at, at any one entity or agency or person. It was instead um, just expressing frustration about the overall situation and how uh, this simply should not um, have happened. And so that's what I have heard. And that's the feeling I've gotten from, from most people. They just wanted their lights back on. So whatever happened uh, a decade ago or even um, a month ago or, or a few days ago uh, before the storm even hit, what, 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 what was known, what wasn't known, like, look, just get our lights back on, get us our services, and uh, so we can survive. So that's the first part of the, the answer to that. But certainly, um, as we look at the days ahead, people uh, do want accountability. Uh, because the obvious question is, is if you look at what we know about the history, uh, just 10 years ago that there um, 
were recommendations made uh, after another major, the last major outage here uh, in North Texas or in the state, uh, there were recommendations made to try to prevent that from happening again. The obvious question is why was nothing um, done about that or what was done? And um, if so, why then are we once again faced with uh, power outages uh, beyond anyone's imagination? Um, certainly the situation with Senator Cruz um, came as a, a shock to a lot of people, particularly uh, here in Texas and in Houston, uh, where he lives and uh, his constituents, uh, many of them clearly upset and thought that um, he should not have taken that trip, uh, taken his family to, um, uh, to Mexico, uh, no matter how long he said he was planning to be there a day or a few days. Um, but at the same time, there, Jaden, there were people or there are people who um, are not criticizing the senator um, and, you know, supporting him in the midst of all of this. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, whether you're Senator Cruz, uh, the governor, or you're on the board of ERCOT, the agency that oversees the, um, the, the power grid throughout most of the state, you're facing a lot of questions. And to be honest with you, I, we have not gotten uh, clear answers uh, at this point as to uh, why some of the weatherization um, uh, recommendations that were made 10 years ago um, weren't applied across the board, it would seem, um, at a number of the um, producing uh, plants uh, across the state. So, you know, there's a lot left to, um, to learn. Uh, but in the midst of all of that, we're still seeing this catastrophe unfold with each and every new day. Um, because as I speak to you now, Jaden, there are people who are worried sick about whether or not their pipes are going to burst um, in the days ahead as we as we thaw out and, you know, how much that's going to cost to fix and, in, you know, dealing with insurance companies. So, um there are a lot of questions out there left to be answered, but there's also a lot of frustration and, and, and frankly worry. Um, but at the end of the day, people are, um, uh, at least here in Texas, and I would dare say across the region are, are strong people and we'll, and we'll get through it. There have been different videos, reports about what's happening in Texas, especially how people are adjusting to this new, well, it's, it kind of is now this new normal uh, because of this winter storm. So how have people been accommodating this snowfall. So how are they uh, preparing as far as uh, preparing meals, you know, keep, keeping uh, clean up on hygiene and also going out into the elements because Texas is normally a place where it's 80 degrees, 70 degrees. Now it's 20 degrees, 10 degrees. So how are people adjusting to this? Well, it, it's unreal. And hey, we're uh, folks in Texas are not used to the cold. So uh, you hit the nail on the head. This is a, certainly a new experience uh, for a lot of people, at least for this kind of long stretch of um, e extreme, extremely cold temperatures. And people have been um, getting really creative. I mean, we've reported on how some people have been boiling snow um, to use, or they're melting it and, and using it as their primary source of, of drinking water. Down in the Houston area, we saw uh, a long line of people um, at one of the local parks there, they found a, a faucet, a spigot in the middle of a park and they were bringing coolers and, and buckets and filling that th those uh, buckets and things up with water uh, to use that. So uh, people have been improvising as best they can. I do know that um, in some parts of the state, the porta potties have been uh, distributed and placed uh, strategically um, around the areas that uh, don't have a uh, power or, or water. And uh, it really gives you a sense of how the infrastructure here has truly been uh, impacted, you know, in, in a real way. And, you know, I've covered a lot of uh, hurricanes, uh, tornadoes, and um, those types of natural disasters, uh, earthquakes. Uh, but if you think about this being one of those massive events, uh, but happening on a much larger scale, you might get a sense of the enormity of all of this and how it's uh, it is truly uh, a real challenge uh, for, for, for everyone. Are there plans to change the way Texans receive electricity, water? So uh, all of that now is uh, up for discussion, right? Um, uh, as you know, the energy grid here in Texas is actually 90% um, uh, of it 
is its own power grid, the only one in the country uh, that's not connected uh, to the other two major grids. And um, that has historically, for the past several decades, been um, a point of pride uh, that, that Texas has been, has been on its own. Uh, but certainly now there are, are questions and uh, perhaps um, at least discussions about what the future uh, will hold in terms of uh, whether the, the the power grid here should be uh, more integrated into the other uh, parts of the, the grids of the rest of the country. Uh, that'll be up to the legislators and um, the operators of the of the power grid, and and we anticipate that those discussions will happen uh, again. Um, and we also know that there are several uh, inquiries and investigations that have been called. Um, uh, including Governor Greg Abbott here in Texas, saying that he wants a full investigation into how this happened. Um, so we can anticipate that happening uh, along with any federal uh, inquiries. Uh, I believe Nancy Pelosi um, also saying that, that she wanted the full investigation just to see how this all happened and, and, and what all we can learn from it. So I suppose after that, uh, there could be a a real conversation about uh, uh, changes, but I think um, this is going to be uh, one of those turning points, um, much like it was in 2011, um, the, made the last major power outage here, uh, but perhaps this one is a little bit uh, different in that it's, it seems worse. And uh, so, yeah, it could be the turning point to a, a change in the way things are done here. That is what a lot of people um, are, are calling for. But first and foremost, everyday people uh, at their homes wanting to protect their kids. They just want their, their lights back on. They want their water. And they also uh, want to be able to find their basic uh, needs at the area grocery stores and, and markets. If people do want to help Texans, what can they do to support them during this very, very difficult time? Um, there are several organizations um, that have uh, set up uh, pages um, where people can either donate funds or um, uh, supplies. Uh, so, you know, a simple Google search uh, um, can, can help you or if you search some of the major uh, cities here, Dallas, Houston, uh, Austin, San Antonio, um, uh, many of the city uh, websites can direct you uh, to ways to help. And that's really been the interesting thing, uh, Jaden, and, and not really surprising, uh, to be honest with you, that um, the people who do have, or who have had all of their, their, their energy or their power and they've never lost water, um, they have been jumping in to, to help their neighbors. Um, and I'm talking about driving people you know, to a hospital or somewhere to get treatment if they need it. Um, or to wherever they can get supplies, just people really pitching in uh, to help each other out. And that's something I've seen uh, all across this country. And, you know, I'm from Texas, this is home for me. So uh, to know and to see people doing that in the midst of this catastrophe is no surprise, it's just par for the course. And so, um, uh, you know, there's, there's not this mass group of people waiting for handouts. Um, people are, um, are helping one another. And it's a beautiful thing to see and every catastrophe, every disaster I cover, um, you know, it's those moments that, that really stand out to me and that I think remind us all that no matter what happens, uh, you know, we are in this together and we have, you know, agency, uh, we have the ability to help one another uh, in times of need. And so that's what we've seen here um, in the form of volunteers and also in um, warming centers that, that local churches and um, also the local municipalities have put together uh, throughout the midst of this uh, to really help people who, are, who have been and are in desperate need. Marcus Moore of ABC News, thank you so much for your time. Jaden, thank you very much for your time. And I have to admit, I'm a little, uh, a little starstruck.